it is over. Writers can put down their pens. The best novel of 2019 has already been written and it is here. So over the past couple of weeks, I have plunged into reading the most wild and epic new novel and I just feel totally amazed. It's just one of those books that you put down and think, wow. And I read a lot, you know I read a lot, but I don't get that feeling very often, but I did here, so I feel very lucky to have read an early copy. Occasionally I'm sent advanced copies of books and I feel very lucky to receive them, but I don't often like to read those books until like around publication time just because I don't want to be one of those annoying people that reads a book months and months before most people can get a copy of it and be raving about it in this you know real gloating way uh, but also like I, it feels oddly anticlimactic to me if I read a book way before publication time and then it comes out and everyone starts raving about it and then I just feel oddly disconnected from that, that experience of, of it being published. But this book, this book I couldn't wait to read because I was so excited about it and it feels like the perfect novel for me. It is Marlon James' new novel, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, and it is being published at the beginning of February in the US and towards the end of February in the UK. And I think it's also going to be a contender for one of the most beautiful covers of the year because look at how gorgeous this is. And it perfectly represents what a surreal, beautiful nightmare the story of this book is because it's very different from Marlon James' previous books. Uh, and a lot of people will know Marlon James from his uh, previous novel, uh, A Brief History of Seven Killings, which won the Booker Prize in 2015 and concerned an attempted assassination on Bob Marley and drug trafficking between Jamaica and the US. And so the, the style of uh, this new novel is very different from this previous book and Marlon James' other works, but it has a similarly epic style feel, just very expansive narrative with uh, multiple points of view and richly detailed characters. He clearly thrives on writing in a really long form because uh, Brief History of Seven Killings is just under 700 pages and Black Leopard Red Wolf is just over 600 pages and it's actually the first part in a planned trilogy that he's writing called the Dark Star Trilogy so uh, there's going to be two other books in this series. And while Marlon James primarily writes in a realistic mode uh, where he depicts historical characters and events that happen in the real world, this novel is just pure unrestrained fantasy and he said in an interview how uh, he wanted to go back to being a fantasy geek and the experience of reading this book made me really feel like a boy again. You know, this boy that just loved to curl up with fantasy novels and get engrossed in this whole uh, magical world uh, because it takes place in a kind of medieval Africa where there are battling kingdoms and magic that takes place. It follows a band of misfit mercenaries who are on a quest to find a boy that has gone missing under very mysterious circumstances and they encounter all sorts of fantastical things along the way uh, like a group of dejected deformed children and hyena women and giants who are pitted against each other in gladiatorial style fights and shadow spirits that walk on the ceilings and uh, flesh-eating monsters and it goes down into kingdoms that are underwater or up in treetops and uh, there are uh, slave traders and uh, witches that trade in the body parts of children and all sorts of really fantastical characters. Every kind of 
sort of fantastical bean, except for maybe like a unicorn, uh, like I'm wearing on my t-shirt. That could be my only criticism of the novel. There, there's no unicorns in this book. <laughs> now, some of you may be thinking, a fantasy novel? I'm not interested in reading a fantasy novel. But believe me, it is so imaginative while being sophisticated and really daring in what it's saying. So it's being touted as a kind of African Game of Thrones. And it really is that because it creates this version of history where all these fantastical things happen while also being firmly rooted in African history and mythology and traditions. And this feels like a very significant statement that Marlon James is making because so many fantasy narratives are rooted in Western Anglo-Saxon traditions like Game of Thrones. But this novel draws upon so much untapped oral history and beliefs to create a fantastical new kind of tale. And it completely destabilizes how we normally think of a linear sense of time and distinctions between life and death and men and women. And while there is magic, it is definitely not a book for children because there are very, very adult themes in the book with a very graphic violence and graphic sex. And a lot of that sex and another reason why I love this book and love Marlon James' writing is because he unashamedly puts gay love and gay relationships and gay sex at the center of his stories. So he did this in A Brief History of Seven Killings in a really clever way. So it tells the story of an attempted assassination of Bob Marley, who is a great Jamaican hero, but it also includes some gay characters and shows real graphic relationships relationships between them. And uh, this is a really bold thing to do because Jamaica has quite a history of homophobia and Marlon James has said himself in the past that uh, because of that homophobic violence uh, it's one of the reasons why he left the country. In 2015 I was one of the judges of the Green Carnation Prize which honors LGBT writers and one of the reasons why we chose this novel as the winner was because of the bold way it handles this subject matter and the, the same thing happens in Black Leopard and Red Wolf and it's even noted at one point how uh, there are lands where men who love men get their cocks cut off and are left to bleed to death. So Marlon James has never forgotten the threat of that violence and he really pays witness to it. So the tumultuous love story at the center of this book is between its narrator, who's named Tracker, and Leopard, uh, who is a shapeshifter that sometimes takes the form of the man. And they primarily have a friendship with each other, uh, but they get very jealous when one or the other of them takes a long-term lover. And there's a period where Leopard's mood towards Tracker changes very dramatically. And the reasons for that change is so funny, you have to read it to believe it. But it's not just the gay love stories at the center of this book, which I think is so progressive, but there are other things as well, like how Tracker conceptualizes his gender, like he thinks of himself as, as both a man and he also has female parts to him. Uh, and also the way it talks about family and non-traditional families. So Tracker forms a, a kind of improvisational family with groups of dejected children uh, who are called the Minji. And I think he's shown with these themes that some of the traditions and practices in African societies were surprisingly progressive and encompassed social ideas which we think of as just being modern. Uh, but of course there were also lots of oppressive and horrific practices as well, like slavery. So the band of mercenaries is commissioned by a slave trader and there's a lot about slavery between the warring kingdoms in this novel. It really is an epic adventure filled with so many surprises. Of course, I felt confused and disorientated at some points because like all fantasy books, uh, it builds an entire new world and so it takes quite a while to become accustomed to that world, especially when the laws of nature seem to keep changing all the time. Uh, but it's helpful because there's a 
list of the cast of characters at the beginning of the book. And over time, I became accustomed to this world that he creates. And I feel really excited by it now because now that I feel more familiar with the world, I want to see more of it and see where he takes the story next. So it's exciting, like I said, that it's the first part of a trilogy. And one of the interesting things about it is that uh, one of the big themes that he, he covers is the whole question of truth. And this, this book is only Tracker's account of what happened, but the future books will give different accounts of the events. And one of the most interesting characters in this book is a uh, woman named Sogolon, who is also a, uh, called the Moon Witch. And the next book will be from her perspective, and I reckon that she's going to give a very different take on what happened with the disappearance of this boy and the significance of this boy that the, the band of mercenaries try to go find and the role that he plays in these battling kingdoms and these battling dynasties. So I just wanted to share my excitement about this book. You know how excited I get by novels that I truly love. And it feels especially exciting that this is the beginning, the very beginning of what is going to be no doubt a very epic series of books. So let me know if you're excited to read it now as well. Let me know if you're a fan of Marlon James' writing. And when you do read this novel, come back and let me know what you think of it, uh, because there is so much to talk about and say about this book. Now, of course, there are so many more books to look forward to in 2019, but I just had to share my thoughts about what is a very, very special novel. So thank you for watching, and I will speak to you again soon.